Okay, Tony. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Friday Night Tie-In. Um, tonight, we are going to uh, do several mayflies, um, all in the flying stage, which means it's above water, not emerging or nymphs. So uh, the drawing you'll see is from um, Rob Flower's book, um, Australian um, Trout Food and Trout Flies, uh, if you can see that. Um, it's a very good book and worth getting hold of for your own benefits. Uh, it's, we've got a couple of copies in the library, I think, and um, yeah, it's a good read, a little dry, but um, gives you a lot of insight into um, insects in Victoria, Tasmania and New South Wales. So it's the only one of its book of its kind in Australia and uh, it is worth having. So the first fly is um, we're going to tie tonight is um, a mayfly that anyone can really tie and you don't need a lot of materials and uh, it's the first fly I suppose I tied with um, Nick Kemp who was um, a master fly tire or fly dresser as he liked to be called. Um, he was from Lancashire uh, and was a difficult man to understand, but uh, he knew a lot about. He was a professional and uh, he used to teach at the uh, artist's hut quite a few years ago. Um, Nick eventually uh, wasn't a well man and um, had to move to Queensland to be near one of his uh, siblings so they could help look after him. But um, him and I used to sit sometimes uh, on a cold winter's night uh, in the artist's hut and him and I were the only ones there. And uh, I learned a few little tricks, I suppose, from watching him do things. Um, I was, at that time, I was completely inexperienced, but I suppose this fly um, started me up on um, learning how to do mayflies. And uh, although it's probably not a strict pattern as such, uh, it will catch fish. So, uh, let's give it a go. Um, the hook, in fact, the hook for all the, the flies I'll tie tonight is um, a dry fly hook and um, size 14. It's standard length, not... Um, the one X's or two X's, which you can use for um, particularly the second two flies, but for this one, uh, this is fine. So this is a red thread, uh, uni thread, um, six odd, and we're just laying a base, which will also be the body. Um, Uh, mayflies have uh, fairly slim bodies. And uh, for the tail, we're going to use um, just some clock hackle fibers, probably six or eight, which will tie in about a hook shank in length. Trim those off. And we will rib it. We'll use some, some fine silver wire. Now, a little trick, it doesn't perhaps so much matter for this one, but um, Nick always used to tie when he was ribbing, he'd always tie things on the um, side of the hook, because he used to say, well, insects aren't round, although there's some, some um, nymphs may be round, but insects in themselves are generally oval shaped. So that's why I've got that habit that I probably, it's not necessary everywhere, but I always tie the wires or that sort of thing on the, 
on the side of the hook. So we're just creating just a slight taper in the hook. Another thing I learned was um, when you tie in the tails, that sometimes it's worth just running uh, material just under the back and just lifts them up slightly because quite often the tails tend to um, want to lie down. So we're just going to wrap. About half a dozen wraps on probably do the trick. You're cutting your, your wire off, always do it in the jaws of your scissors, otherwise you'll blunt them. And that's the body and uh, the, the tail for the hackle. We're just going to use a, a reddish brown one. Uh, we use the shiny side out and just wrap back a little bit. The body should be two thirds to three quarters of the shank and the echo of the balance. So these are touching turns. We want to get it quite bulky. Should do. Before you do a whip finish, um, particularly when you're starting out, is that you don't want things to unravel and it's very easy thing to occur. So it's always worth putting in a half hitch and just put push that hackle back. In this case, we won't do a whip finish, we'll just um, leave it like that. And four of those uh, half hitches are good enough to hold your hold the fly, uh, the hackle in place, and um, off. a little bit of head cement on that, and um, there's a uh, a little red uh, mayfly. Yeah, nice fly, Tony. It looks really good. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's quite. A, uh, you don't need a lot of materials, as I said. And it's something we can all try to um, beginners can try and um, get that set it up. Now, um, I don't know whether we can see this. Can we, Bill? Just uh where are you um we need to come up a little bit further up towards the, the ice uh i can't lift it okay it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i was just That's trying right. to um position okay for the second fly um bill do you want to um put that um cosy done we think it is uh that's the one on my finger. The one on your finger, great. Excellent, got it. There we are. Um, this photo was taken on the uh, Kiowa River, I think about 12 months ago, um, maybe a bit longer. And um, I believe it's a, a, a cosy dun. Now, cosy duns are not, um, probably prevalent down in um, the Goulburn area. They're a, a higher mountain insect. 
Um, Mick Hall has written extensively about them, uh, if you want to research him on this. But you'll notice this, is, this fly is quite dark. It's got antenna in the front, which you normally uh, don't necessarily see, or um, they're not normally shown on um, insects anyway, uh, that you see photographed. Um, he's got two tails, which are about a shank and a half long, and his body is uh, quite dark, as is the uh, wings. So um, he, that was uh, photographed in mid-morning under the canvas of our camper trailer. There are quite a few of them around. Um, I haven't, I have tied up some of them, um, but I haven't been able to use them because, well, we haven't been camping, but we're well, up on uh, Mount Beauty. So, so we're going to give this a go. Um, the hook size will be the same and the thread will be um, an 80 black. You see that? Yep. So we'll get started. Again, I'm just laying a base. For the, hat, for the body. Um, we're going to use um, um, micro fibbits for the tail. Now these are fiddly little buggers and you might have to bear with me because they don't always work the way you want them to work. But we're going to tie in um, two tails and um, we will um, separate them by creating a, just a little knob at the end of the shank before the bend starts. Doesn't have to be terribly big, but just enough to help separate them. Can you see them, Bill? I can just see it, Tony. Yeah, it's pretty, they're it's pretty fine. Idea. Yeah, but we see it. Yeah, we see there's two there in your hand. Okay. So we've um, splayed them out at about 45 degrees, um, 30 to 45 is probably uh, about the range. And for the body, we're going to use um, stripped peacock quill. Now to get these, you can buy them or he strip for you, or you can get chemical, uh, chemi which they do chemically to uh, get the fibers from, from them, but you can also get stick on ones. And um, they're quite expensive actually. To do it yourself, all you need to do is have either a razor blade or a, um, a sharp fingernail, a little bit of patience is required, but um, um, you can do it yourself quite easily. So this body, they're delicate um, and very easy to break. So we're going to wind this up the body. Keeping... And you're doing that in the opposite direction, Tony. Uh, well, yes, it's easier for me to see. Yeah, okay. All right. uh, that's the only reason. It doesn't matter which way you do it, actually. 
So are they touching? No, or they're not segmenting? touching. There's a slight gap. So what you'll see is the uh, the greeny colour of the um, the quill, and then you'll see a little bit of black thread in between. So that if we, um, when we go back to that photo at the end here, we'll go back and just have a look at both the photo and mm -hmm. the fly, which uh, there's a photograph of. Okay. And you'll see the segmentation. I mean, it's pretty slender. Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh. Got to start that one again. I have to start that again. So. And this is the mishaps of uh, fly tying. Sometimes That's you just, right. yeah. it's only just the scissors is always that close to the, uh, yeah, I don't to know the right and wrong side of where you're trying to cut. Yeah. Um, create a bit more body there. Um, just as well, I've got others um, ready. You're an organised man, Tony. We know uh, that. Well, these things happen, unfortunately. So did you just strip that yourself, those, yeah. those ones? Yeah. Yeah, I just... Uh, it's something you can do while you're watching TV or something, you know. It's, they're not hard to do. It's just um, out of... Um, a length of uh, a peacock f um, feather. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> That's how delicate they are. Yeah. And for some people, oh, I can't be bothered dealing with that. But, I mean, I'm not, except for this occasion, I'm not generally in any hurry to do things, so it doesn't worry me. But... Um, They are fiddly. And very easy to break. So third time lucky. They're nice hackle pliers because they're, they're skinny. Yes. Some yeah. of the hackle pliers are wider, aren't they? The, yeah. The standard sort of ones. Are they C and F, those ones? Yeah, well? yeah. yeah. I think they make good tools. Um, the stone forward tools also are very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't used to be able to get them here until the last um, couple of years. They do make... Um, um, very good tools as well. I've only got a couple. I think I've only got uh, a couple of tools, don't put ones. Hey, you got it right this time. Yeah. Now, because these are delicate, and um, if you did catch a fish on this, it's probably the um, the, the uh, teeth from even small fish are enough to cut through this. And so your fly gets wrecked very easily. Um, so, so is there a way around that to try and... Um, yes, I'm going to um, put some um, resin. Oh, okay. Yep, good. Is that UV resin? Yeah, UV yep. resin. Um, I see you're putting a very small amount on there. Yeah. Well, I don't want to... Um... to um... make the body any bigger than it needs to be. Okay.
And this is the purple light, the, the UV light. light. The yep. Torch, yep. So that creates a bit of durability. I mean, the microfibits for the tail, I mean, they're very delicate too, and they're very easy to break. That's why a lot of people don't use them. They just use um, fibers from your hackle as a tail, which are probably stronger. But the fly looks good. Mm. So now this is um, because this is um, this particular insect is quite dark in the color. We're going to use um, a dark dun hackle. Because I won't, when next time I'm fishing up at Mount Beauty, I am going to fish with this um, fly because of the prevalence of those insects when I was up there last, which is some time ago now. But um, Crowded the head a little bit. That's where it's important to get a half hitch in there. Yeah, I can see that when you put that half hitch, hitch in there, you've actually pushed them back just a yeah, little bit. Yeah. yeah, good idea. Well, I think it's um, it's so easy to to put your hack on, and you want to put six, you know, around about six turns on. Um, quite often, you don't leave enough room. Yeah, what I might do is put that photograph up that you've got of that. Yeah, fly. okay. Yeah, just show the photograph. Okay. Um, and the fly that there was two the flies that were on the, the foam pad because you here we go. There we so go. That, oh, that's the insect. Um yeah, the difference with this that fly particular fly when I tied that, um I used a, a brownish, a brown, I think. Oh, there's two hackles in that particular fly, but the body's the right color and the wings, sorry, not the wings, the tail filaments are the right thing. In this one I've just tied, I've made the, the hackle actually darker because I think that lighter one wasn't a true representation. This is just, probably better. Just, just take that out of the vise and just bring it a little bit closer to the camera, Tony. Okay. Just hold, hold, it. It, hold it by the end of the hook and just let's have a look at it. Uh, up a little bit higher. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can Great. Can, if I turn. Yes. Around, yes. We can see that. Yes. Yeah, can you see the segmentation? Yep. Yeah, you can. I, I can see the segmentation quite clearly. I mm. mean, uh, a fish would be able to see that. Um, yep. Definitely. Uh, no, that's so, great. It's great. Really good. Uh, Geez, it's a nice, it's a nice looking fly with those fivots on. Fivots yeah, on no, the back. it's lovely. I mean, yeah. you put it on a display box, really. Mm. <laughs> Not meant to catch fish, truly. But, uh, yeah. So I'll just put that over there. Um, so the, for the third fly, um, perhaps we put up that other photo, Bill. The um, um, uh, so, so this one here. That's the orange one. Yep, this one now. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Now that that in the, that photograph was taken at the same time as the other one, which I believe to be a cosy dun. This is um, uh, an orange, orangey ginger um, 
may fly, um, whether it's in the done stage or um, about to become a spinner, I don't know. But they were prevalent too and uh, flying all over the place um, that morning. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's, we're going to tie that as well. And we again, we'll use... Um, um, uh, you'll notice that segmentation is quite subtle on it, um, and we'll represent that a little bit differently to the last one. So again, it's um, size 14 hook. And this time we're going to use um, 80 uh, Rusty Brown. I think it's Rusty Brown. Yeah, Rusty Brown. And they change the names of these colours sometimes, which is a little bit annoying. But the dye lots seem to have a habit of being either lighter or darker from when you, you went the last time. So and this is the rusty brown. So it's as close as I think I can get to that um, particular insect. Um, now, for this one, we're going to use, I might use the microfibers, we're going to use some uh, gingery orange fibers. And there's always, within any um, your hackles you buy, there's always a range of colors from browns through to, you know, brownie red through to orange. And these come from the base and are a little bit longer, so they're good for tails. So this, a few too many there. So again, we try and for this one, we'll tie them in so they're a hook shank a little bit more in length. I don't mind them being splayed out a little bit because you want this insect to um, sit. On the surface of the water. And um, for the ribbing in this one, I'm going to use um, just a little bit of uh, thread. Now that's um, a personal silk, which I treat like gold because you can't get it anymore. And it, it has a certain sheen. I don't know whether you can see it, but um, it has a brightness to it that other threads, cotton threads don't have. So we're going to use that as the uh, the rib for this. As I'm trying to, I mean, realistically, I'm trying to match that photograph, really. Uh, and I suppose I'm saying that the ribbing is quite subtle. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a taper, not much.
And this time we're going to use a fiery brown reddish hackle. I noticed you start that hackle a fair way back from that eye there. Yeah, um, well, yeah, I'm trying to um, not crowd the eye. Obviously. Not crowd the eye yeah. too much. In fact, I probably finished up crowding it. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> it's amazing. You think you've got. Um, a lot of room, yeah. A lot of room, out. and you don't. You just don't. Um, you see, like some, uh, you know, really good fly tires on the internet and so on. They they leave um, a certain amount of space. See, I'm this is. Uh, some bare hook behind the eye, which they don't encroach on till the very last, you know, roll of the thread. But it's, um, it takes a lot of discipline to get to that, I think. Again, you're using that half inch yeah. to, just to push that, uh, yeah, just that hackle back, back a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. I mean, it's very noticeable when you do it. You can see yeah, it's yeah. come back. Yeah. 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 Um, if you're not competent at doing a whip finish, um, um, the half hitch is very good. And a bit of head cement then all locks it all in place. Yeah. Now just bring that fly in when you're ready, just bring it in towards the camera, just so we can see the segmentation. If you can. Yeah, you can. Pretty yeah, subtle. You can see it. It's very subtle. Yeah, yeah. Very subtle. Um, yeah. Very subtle. So that's um, great. So all those flies that we've you've tied uh, tonight, there, uh, we can use those as dry flies. Yep, all the dry flies. Yeah, and um, yes, it's just a matter of um, maybe establishing what um, if you see insects flying, what colour they are really. And yeah. um, I mean, if they're any of those, will do will um, suit a particular stage of the. Uh, the mayfly, but um, for all the flying, uh, they're not, you could use them, I suppose, by cutting the, um, as an emerger type, not an emerger, but something that's spent by cutting the, uh, the hackle off parallel and allowing them to sit a bit more, a bit more in the meniscus. But you will catch fish on all of them. Um, well, uh, particularly the first one, because I have caught fish on that, the, the the second and the third one I haven't used them yet. Yeah. Um, because so the, those flies there you would use as a single fly because they're very yeah they're too subtle. delicate. They, yeah. Yes, you, you can't use them with the dry dropper, for example. Um, maybe an unweighted. Um, you could. Yeah, I don't think you could use even unweighted. I think they would to be pulled down too quickly because they're pretty delicate. The three of them. You could, um, if you can't see them, one of the things you could do was tie on a larger dry, um, even a grasshopper pattern, and have this trailing behind. Oh, okay. All right. But you you wouldn't use these with a, a nymph. Okay. Hanging right. below. They're too heavy, uh, I think. Um, 
certainly an un, uh, not a weighted nymph anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, right, they really are um, proper dry flies, I suppose, delicate dry flies. So. Yeah, great. Look, uh, Tony, thanks very much for that. Uh, and we'll get that onto our uh, Red Tag YouTube channel. And okay. uh, I'll stop the recording now. Thanks very much indeed. All right. Thank you. Bye.